I think there's some folklore about this story, but like I was at his house, I think he like was just opened up the closet door to like show me some painting. There was just like boxes of finished paintings all filed neatly in there. It was just disturbing. First off, that's fucked up. You have those these boxes of paintings like just get get them out there. Just give them away. Like I was kind of pissed. I was just like you're like doing all this stuff but you're not sharing it. Like that wasn't really the way I saw things at that point yet. Thomas said, this guy Aaron does shows with skateboarders. He should do a show there. And so we sent this package of photos, like paintings. He sent me an envelope full of Polaroids of his paintings as like a portfolio. So I was just like, all right, well, he's got a lot. Like that was like, kind of like that. It was like, well, yeah, he makes a lot of stuff. So I guess he's good. <laughs> you know? We joke about it now, but I'm not even sure if he necessarily liked my work. Nobody knew anything about art. Ed didn't know anything about art, you know? I mean, maybe a little. He, I knew, he liked Larry Clark and he liked Egon Schiele, you know? So there were like two artists that he knew about that he was trying to kind of copying at the time. And I didn't really know that much either, except it being like, well, A, it's Ed Templeton. He's famous. B, he's willing to drive out all the art for free. I think Aaron rep responded like, yeah, this would be cool, but you know, we don't have any money. And I was like, oh, I'll just rent a van and drive it out there. They drove all the way across country and they pulled up in front of the gallery and knocked on the door. And that was the first time I met Ed. It was just like, hey, how's it going? I'm Ed, you know, can we unload? And then they just opened the thing and just brought all of this crap in. And you know, it was like an interesting experience because all my paintings, I mean, they clearly had a very like Egon Schiele sort of vibe. I was super influenced by that and people called it out and it was like a bummer to hear like I, you know see what people walk in and just say like oh it looks like you can actually like pff, dismiss it but it's kind of you need that I think as an artist sometimes to get that criticism. As is his work now is like highly sexualized a lot of the New York skaters like we're not liking it at all we're not digging this what he had going on there. The show was primarily paintings I had all these paintings and I the whole thing was paintings, but there was this doorway that kind of was right in the middle of the gallery that bothered me, that it didn't have anything on it. I did this cover the door in Polaroids. They're not any good, it was just like stuff, you know? But I did, by chance, have a few photos of my own boner, and maybe someone else's boner. He took a piece of cardboard, it was probably about you know, four feet long, and then wrapped tinfoil around it as a frame. <laughs> you know, that was like his weird idea of what like would look cool or whatever. He just called it all my friends' dicks, or all my friends' boners something like that. And that was really the one that like, that was the one that really pissed him off. Like culturally, it was pretty a pretty conservative time. And you knew that maybe he got naked sometimes, like in a goof around kind of way. He didn't do anything that crazy, but like there was talk that he must be gay. The skating scene that Aaron was tapped into and that skater artist scene, it tends to be California white dudes from suburbia who had some access to art school or, or like an Ed's version, self-taught through the art section at Barnes and Noble in, in Huntington, you know, and and then those guys are all much more urban, you know, multi-ethnic, uh, different uh, class situations, and so there was like, so if someone's gay, that's a problem, you know. <laughs> Wait, how are you? Tell me again how you're not just a dumb jock. Is that your issue? I don't think Ed was like thinking like that, like, oh yeah, I'm going to New York and those guys are also like homophobic and like hip hop, like, I'm gonna make something with dicks. I think Ed just made something with dicks. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't think it was like <laughs> intentional. I think it's absolutely overblown. Like I've, I've uh, he, he sleeps naked. I've shared a room with him, he sleeps naked. I think that's kind of normal. I, I'm sure a lot of dudes sleep naked, you know, but he's not up cruising around in the living room of the hotel, like naked painting dudes or, I think all those stories are, are definitely blown out. I get this, I, this has been following me my whole career. I mean, like, but at the time, at that, you know, in my, from my early, my first interview in Transworld, I addressed homophobia. Like, I saw it in skateboarding and wanted to, like, address it, like, and speak out against it. Ed's kind of like Morrissey in that he has these magical powers, and he can get men to fall in love with him, even if they're heterosexual. And I don't know, even know how it happened. I was drunk, and next thing I know, my pants are around my ankles and my little tally whacker was peeking out the bottom and I still to this day have no idea how or why my pants came off for that photo. And it's been everywhere. That photo was in Mocha. It's weird when people you don't know see your dick. For the longest time, there was like a, 
a certain group of people that were that truly believed Deanna was a beard, like that I was married only on face value, and that I was secretly gay. Because I would get this stuff like with the Heman Ed Haters Club with Big Brother, all all the time. Ed had got so much hate mail because everyone thought he was gay, and there was so much homoerotic content in Big Brother to begin with, and so we just turned it into the Ed Haters Club. It all started in jest, and Ed thought it was funny. He, he really enjoyed the, the attention at first, because it was just, the best way to say fuck you to people like that is just to embrace it. So then we offered it. That's the thing, it's like once you open the floodgates, it's, it happens. So we did this little thing saying like, hey, join the Ed, He-Man Ed Haters Club. He's like a artsy farty gay skater guy, or whatever, like, you know. So once we said, please write in letters, then it just went crazy to the point where we got kind of scared. I mean, it was like death threats and just, really intense hate mail. He taunted it at first too, like he was kind of like, oh yeah, hate Ed, hate on Ed. Yeah. Oh, I guess. And so he kind of brought it on, but then it really came on. And I think it got too much for him. <laughs> well, people are fucking crazy. I mean, I find it crazy that anyone didn't see the humor in it or and or took it seriously. I've been around long enough to know that people are fucked. So yes, I think they genuinely actually did hate Ed but I think overall, it turned out to be one guy. Did they mention that? And we were like, oh, how, well, how can you prove it? And he's like, look at all the names. Every single name I made is a character from Bonanza. The rad thing about Ed, and I, I think his art speaks this way, and, and his personality is one that not going to put on a mask for you. And he expresses himself openly. And sometimes the way he expresses himself will offend people. He's completely opened all the creative boundaries that everyone tries to set a creative boundary and Ed's there to just smash it down. We need people like that. We need people that refuse to be censored creatively, whatever you want to put it, any boundary, authority, any of it. We need people to push those boundaries, you know, so that we can better understand exactly what's going on at that period. And Ed's somebody that documents what he sees and that's enlightening. That? Criticism is fine. Like I've never, yeah, I've never been the kind of person. You know, I've had people come up to me at art shows and just like, I have issues with your work. And instead of being like, "Fuck you," I want to like, I'm angry at you. Uh, I'd be like, "Why? Like, let, let me hear why." Because I think it. Hopefully, it'll like make, you know, make me better, make make me look at it a different way. I don't know. Oh, this I just found, and this is one of one of Ed's first paintings, or one of the first ones from that show. And I think it says a lot about who Ed is. It's from '93, and it's a um, self-portrait of him and his dad. His first paintings, now looking back, and Ed, don't get mad at me for saying this, you'll probably agree, were like really bad. Like it took Ed a lot longer than some of the other artists from like our crew anyway, to kind of find his, find his vision. He puts all his faith in like volume, you know what I mean, and work, which is interesting going back to being like, oh yeah, he's famous and he's got a lot of stuff. Like even then it was just like work, 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 work. No, it's to myself. The only people that like your paintings are people who like to look at naked people. Don't let things get out of control. No means no, never The only reason yes. your paintings are popular is because they have naked people in them. Ed's so nice and approachable and accessible and so is Deanna. I remember it made me feel like, oh, I could make a film, but I could hang out with him and he'd be cool. I probably shot for five, to five seven days, something like that. We did like the beach and stuff because it was supposed to be a portrait of Huntington and Ed and his weird relationship with it. And then Ed interviewed people, like the teen smokers. How long have you been smoking? About two years. Two years? What kind? Reds. Marlboro Reds? Yeah. How do you get them? I just asked some guy on the street to get it for me. Right on. What is happiness? Skating and getting drunk and loaded and smoking. Really? How yeah. old are you? 15. Like Teenage Smokers, his Teenage Smokers series. Like when he like put that out, that was that was no more important than any other thing he was making. You know what I mean? It wasn't like he had this flash of genius. Like I'm gonna do Teenage Smokers and it's gonna be genius. It was just like part of a whole huge show, and there was like one section that was just like these pictures that he had been taking on tour of kids smoking at like skate parks and stuff at demos. And that the second he did that, all of a sudden, like the art world started taking notice of him. You know what I mean? It was no longer like just kids' world. Like 
it was like, oh, is this, he like packaged like a series, you know what I mean? And then the art world were like, oh, Teenage Smokers. And even to this day, like it still comes up all the time. That's another part of him. It's that sort of straight edgy vegan part of him that's like very aware of all the fucked up stuff we do to ourselves that our culture kind of sells at us as like not being that bad. So that's sort of like his like cultural critical part of him. You know, he, he's into the, all the decay. I remember I have this photograph of like showing Ed for the first time this book, uh, Teenage Lust by Larry Clark. And I remember him being so excited, just looking through the pages like, ah, oh, whoa, this is, this is crazy, whatever. And he ended up using a couple of the images from Teenage Lust for one of his uh, skate video covers. It was heavy metal, it was like the Hessian dude with the hair. He had his, one of his first shows in New York at Alleged, and Larry Clark came to his show and was like, hey, use my photographs on your skate video. You didn't even ask me or pay me or anything. And he's like, oh, I thought you were dead. I didn't know. I didn't even know you were alive. Oh, fuck. That's funny. For Ed, I think like that book and definitely Tobin Yellen were really influential on like his development, especially Tobin. There's nobody else like Ed out there ever in this world, you know? And I think like a lot of people become artists throughout their life and stuff. And, and I think Ed just had no choice. He was just born the way he is. And he's not even an artist, he's just Ed, you know? And like, I, I, I love that, you know? It's like the most pure form of art there is and, and it lies within Ed, you know? And that's like, that's just, it's cool, it gives me like, chills thinking about it, kind of almost, you know. <laughs>